Now I'm delighted to be joined here by Long Town manager Darren Doyle. Darren, two sending offs, an 8-8 eight, eight minute penalty. We're down to nine men and we only go down 2-1. You're probably a little bit disappointed, but at the same time, you know, the team performed fairly well up until the later stages of the game. Yeah, no, they did. I think until um, we got the first goal, it was quite an even game. Um, so maybe the first 10 or so minutes, it was quite even with chances for both sides. Um, when Dean Bourne takes his goal, we started to control the game. I thought Jack Darwin had an excellent game and started finding a really dangerous position and had his playing. Um, you mentioned a couple of sendings off, and obviously Carl Chambers sending off did have an effect on the game. It was gone out to 10 men and having to change our shape and the system of play that we had. We had to play with a narrow bank of forward at the back and in midfield. And, and it worked to a point that it worked, it worked really well that we, we sort of stifled them. They did have a couple of chances, which you probably always are going to have, but. Um, and we made it difficult for them. We were the second half in a really good shape. We caught them on the break a couple of times and could have scored. Uh, I think McGlade was dangerous for them on a couple of points in the second half. But um, the decision at the end regarding the penalty, one or two, I say maybe it was a soft penalty, to be honest. I'd have to go and look at it again myself. But looking at it now, I don't know. I know Shane comes in behind the player, but difficult to tell from there. I need to see it again. As regards to the reaction from the players, um, obviously the, the refs told us that it's for variables that um, Anto Breslin has been sent off for so I think it's a case of waiting to see what's put into the report there and um, we'll take it from there once we hear more of that in the week but um, you know, on another night we could have been ahead by a goal before the penalty kick and obviously then when they get the penalty with two or three minutes to go and we're down to nine men it's, it's very difficult to come back into the game but before that we had a really good shape about us we were hard to break down and like you say we, we could have scored some of the lads look very sharp tonight, you know, Dean Bourne with his 11th goal of the season so far, you know, he latched onto a terrible back pass in, in the back line of Bray, but, you know, some people say, oh, it's an easy goal, but you have to be ready for something like that, you know, you have to be in the right place and be ready to latch onto it and score. No, you do, and it's one that we work on when balls go back to the opposition keeper, where we want our wide players to be, because if you're treating back in an area where he's dropping off, you're never going to get a ball like that, so that's actually something that we work on, and he's done exactly what we've done, and he's got himself in that position where... If it's a pro pass or in between, we have quick wide forwards that can get onto them and he's done that really well tonight, he took his goal really well and he's like you say he's eleven goals now for the season and he's been great for us himself. There was a number of them looked really sharp out there tonight and played really well and I've full confidence in the squad going forward that we still have enough despite who may be suspended and who miss games. We'll have players coming back in and there's enough of the group in there to go where we need to go as a group. We performed very well, I think, in the second half. You know, as you said, we caught them on the break a few times. You brought Peter Hopkins on for Sean Boyd, and Peter nearly got in himself, latching onto a, a wayward back pass, and he set up Dean Bourne, Dean dragged the shot wide. You know, Longford could have won it in the end before the penalty. Yeah, no, like I said, we, we well could have. We had the chances. I think we looked the more dangerous side when we got the ball, and we played some really good football through them when we got on it. Um, from then, we defended really well as a back four. Like I said, we did have one or two chances, which they're always going to have, but... We could have been up in the game on another night, might be May have but, but not tonight, then we get done with the penalty at the end. As you said, you know, players are coming in and out now, and with suspensions, you'll have more coming in. You know, Sam will return next week, A. Durbin as well. Uh, and Jack Dartley filled in the role, I think, where A would have been tonight, and you know, Jack performed very well there. Yeah, and we did initially, obviously, he was to be obviously more advanced in midfield, but what happened with Carl Chain was obviously we had to go into a bank of four in midfield where he went in there with Dean. Uh, I think he only got a look at his game, and I think it was. McGlade coming in from the left wing and who gets a tackle in the box. It was Jack Doherty. I think his work rate was fantastic today. His ability on the ball is second to none in the league. He can make things happen and he'll be a huge boost and asset for us going forward. A few injuries maybe picked up tonight. Sean Boyle went off looking like he was holding himself and, and Dylan Grimes. How are they doing after the game? Uh, Dylan Grimes has a bit of a knock to the hamstring. So the physios have been having a look at it. We'll assess it over the next day or two and see exactly where we are on that front. Uh, with Sean Boyle, obviously, he missed a couple of games with a hamstring issue. Um, and obviously again tonight it's fell to around the 60 minute mark so again that will have to be looked at and we need to make sure before he comes back the next time that that needs to be 100% because with injuries like that if they aren't right and you come back too soon you end up missing longer overall so they, they need to be assessed but we, we'll have Aaron Dobbs coming back in next week as well um, he missed out tonight due to illness and listen, it'd be great to have Dobbsy coming back in because he's been brilliant for us the last couple of weeks Looking ahead to next week, you know, we're going down to St. Thomas Park for our final league game of the season. It's always tough going down to Colvin, you know, they've been on form, maybe not so much last night, but um, they've been on form under Stuart Ashton, so it'll obviously be tough going down there to try and get a win. Yeah, no, it will be, I you know, if you obviously take last night's result out of it again, they went down to 10 men, I think, after half an hour as well. But they're, they're good side, they're well organised, they have a couple of really good players, and it's going to be a difficult game. 
Um, it tends to be when you go down there, but it's a bit full belief that who goes down there that we, we can get a result. We want to win the game next week, because a win next week will put us, I think it should confirm third place. Um, if you confirm third place, it means that we have the return leg of the first playoff game here where we would like it to be. So we've got to go down there, look to get the result we want, and that'll carry us down and hopefully in on a high into the playoffs. Just looking at the potential playoff, it's most likely at this stage. Um, even if Drogheda lose next week against Bray, that would be facing Cavendish in the first playoff game. Just looking at that game on its own, Cavo have kind of been our kryptonite this season. You know we've struggled yeah. against them at home and away, but at the same time, you know we've done fairly okay in the league. You know we finished ahead of them. The lads will still be confident when we come up against them. Yeah, obviously I think they will be. I told them how highly I regard them and how strong the squad is. Um, Cavendish are a well organised team. What they do, they do really well. Um, so it's important that if it is them that we have in the playoffs that we put in the work on the training pitch that's needed to stop these things from happening to make sure that we're, we control the game with and without the ball. So they're the important things when you play a team like Kevin Seeley that you're organised, that you're arranged for what you're going to come up against. But on the flip side that when you have the ball and you have the quality of players that we have that we can make things happen and cause them problems and make them worry more about us than maybe we have to do about them. I mean it's, it'll be a huge game for whoever's in the playoffs and this will be well for it. Just on a side note, you know, you're after bringing John Martin in as your, your assistant to you. John seems to have gelled with the lads fairly quick, you know, they're all, they're all speaking very highly of him. Was it an easy decision for you to bring John in? Um, it was, you know, I mean, obviously when everything happened a couple of weeks ago and I was asked to take over for the rest of the year, it was um, something I had to think about. And listen, John is someone that I've known, we played here together in 2007. Um, he's a really good lad. I've actually, when I was playing at Shell, when John was a coach at Shells as well. Um, I've known him over the years and kept in touch with him over the years. He's someone who I trust. Um, he's a really, really good guy, which is which is the number one thing to, to have people around you who you trust and are good people. And John is one of those. But he's got bags of experience going back to managing leagues, that have been taking them up from I think the fourth league and then to senior league right away to the top. He's coached at the underage up to 19s at Shamrock Rovers. He's coached the League of Ireland level, and this will be a huge asset to the, the group we have. So I'm delighted to bring John in. I think the supporters are born to him as well. You know, after the game tonight in the rain, he was the first one over to Section O and, you know, applauding them. So the fans are really appreciative that, you know, we've we two former players, former captain, cup winner, now in charge of the team. Yeah, listen, and, and it's, it's good for the club. Like I say, John has great history at the club, and I think that's important as well. But on the flip side of that, it's important that we do our job and that we're here to get the most out of the team. And, and that's the most important thing going forward, how we make this group of players do what we need to do to get where we want to be, which is in these playoffs, and we want to have seven games left, because that's what we have to look at. Good man.